Well, good evening, students, and happy Easter. Today is Resurrection Sunday, and I hope you had a chance to join us for worship this morning to celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive. Well, last Sunday night, Pastor Riley started us off in this brave series, talking about what it means to be brave to surrender our lives to Jesus. Tonight, we have Pastor Sean from Grace Point Church in Brookings, South Dakota, and he's going to be continuing this brave series. And so I want you to sit down and engage with this video and really listen and start to think about how what Pastor Sean wants to tell us from God's Word can apply to our lives. So enjoy. What's up, everybody? My name is Sean Broderick. I'm the Director of Student Ministries in Brookings, South Dakota at Grace Point Wesleyan Church. And I don't know where you're joining us from tonight, but I just wanted to tell you that we are so glad that you're tuned in. Uh, we love you, and I pray that tonight you can leave this message thinking a little bit differently about Jesus and how you engage with him for the better. Uh, of course, I'm repping GSM, so I just have to give a quick shout out to the youth group that I serve in. Shout out to all the GSM students who are watching and our adult leaders who are watching as well. I miss you guys so much. I love you so much, and I know that when we get back together, it's just going to be crazy. I can't wait. And in the same vein, we're doing this series together as a district. So I have some other shout outs I need to do. I need to make sure I don't miss them. Um, so I'm going to use this high form technology and just say, it's so cool that this goes all the way to Wyoming also. But shout out to Trailhead Youth in Buffalo, Wyoming, uh, and New Life Youth in Gillette, Wyoming, with Pastor Stephen and Pastor Sarah, respectively. And then they said it couldn't be done. But we have also brought together East River and West River, South Dakota together. So shout out to Thrive Youth in Mitchell with Renee, Countryside Youth in Spearfish with Pastor Jamie, and then of course, Life Spring Youth in Sturgis with Pastor Ryan, and then right here in our backyard, about an hour away in Sioux Falls, shout out to Linwood Student Ministry and Ransom Teens with Pastor Zach and Pastor Riley. We love you guys, honestly. I'm so glad that we're in this together. And if you're watching live somewhere with your youth pastor, shoot him a text, tell him in the chat that you love him. I know these guys love you and we are so excited to be in this thing together. And if you're in a different youth group or you don't even go to church, we are so happy that you tuned in tonight. I pray that this will be for the better and that you can just really see Jesus for who he is, someone who really loves you and more than anything wants to be in a relationship with you. So I don't know if this will even look cool. We're getting into things tonight, so that is gone and we're getting into the word. Last week, if you tuned in with us, we're in this series called Brave. And Pastor Riley from The Ransom talked to us about what it means to be brave enough to surrender to God. And for me, I, I walked away from the message really personally feeling convicted about, wow, I can confidently bring 100% of my life and circumstances to God, to, to commit to Him, to surrender to Him, because God is good 100% of the time. He's not just good in my small decisions or my big decisions, but He's good in all of them. And for all the time, God is good. And God is good all the time, right? Amen. I want to stay in this idea of God being good. And I'm just going to give you the big idea for tonight. The idea of the whole series is brave. And tonight I want to look at biblically what it means to be brave enough to testify. Brave enough to testify. And that's just a cool word. Um, but I think we need to understand really what it means. We've heard, oh yeah, testify to the word of God. Amen. You know, in church or in those deep moments when you meet a new Christian and you say, can you just tell me a little bit about your testimony? These are words that make their way around the Christian circles, around the church, but the word testify and testimony doesn't come from church originally. It comes from legal cases, uh, specifically in courts. If you look in the dictionary, to testify will be to give evidence as a witness to something in the law of court. And while that will work for tonight, I want us to look at the secondary definition that says to testify, and if you're a note taker, you're going to want to write this down. To testify is to declare the truth about something. To testify is to declare the truth about something. So if our big idea is being brave enough to testify, tonight we're talking about what it means to be brave enough to tell the truth about something, and that's something being God. I think in this time, this is more important than ever because when we look around and if we didn't know Jesus, our circumstances would honestly tell us that God's not good. People are losing jobs, people are getting sick, there's more unknowns than we've maybe ever faced before in most of our lives, and it might tell us that God is distant. 
if we only judge it from the circumstances. But as people who are called to be set apart from the rest of the world and step into this gap, we are called to testify. We are called to say that even though my circumstances aren't good or they aren't perfect, I know that my God is. And I'm not sure that there is a scripture that tells this story better than Acts 26. That's where we're going to flip tonight if you want to open up your Bibles with me. Acts 26, the book of Acts is all about the early church. This is chronologically and in your Bible order right after the Gospels and the Gospels talk all about the earthly life of Jesus. But Acts is about how the church is established when Jesus is no longer physically present. And it's so cool to me seeing how these early church practices are still involved in our worship today. How we still come together and we read the word of God like we're doing right now even though it's digitally. And how we come together and we sing songs just like they did in Acts. And Acts also tells the story of some of the earliest pioneers of the church, the, these key Christian figures who really paved the way of the church and they still play a pivotal role in how we view things today. And if you grew up in the church, I'm sure you've heard of him. Tonight we're gonna be looking at the life of Paul. The life of Paul, and he wasn't always named Paul. As a matter of fact, he used to be named Saul until God transformed his life and he gave him a new name. But Paul talks about this change in Acts 26. Acts 26 is where we're going to be tonight. If you want to flip to that, I know the scripture will also be on the screen. But in Acts 26, verses 12 through 18, we see Paul testifying. And we see Paul giving his testimony of how his life was changed. Hear this. This is what he says. Paul says that on one of my journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. And at about noon, King Agrippa... This is who he's talking to, and we're going to get to who King Agrippa is. But at about noon, King Agrippa, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, blazing around me and my companions, and we all fell to the ground. And I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Then I asked, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. Whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied, Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness, get that, a witness, of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. If you're a note taker like me, I'm gonna give you three points tonight. We're starting right there. Acts 26 verses 12 through 18. The first point is this. Number one, when it comes to being brave enough to testify, Paul didn't use all these special words. Paul didn't quote scripture. But number one is this. Paul testified about the goodness of God in his life. Paul testified about the goodness of God in his life. He just straight up told it like it was. They knew what he used to be doing. He says, King Agrippa, as I was moving from one community to the other, and don't worry, I was told by the, by the priests that I could, they're like, whoa, whoa, were you allowed to be moving? Yeah, yeah, I was. And out of nowhere, this light came down from heaven. And I can't explain it, but Jesus called out to me. He said, this is your new purpose. And we all have a story like that. If we follow Jesus today, we have a story where we realized something was missing in my life and I realized that Jesus was that thing. And it might not be a light that shone down from heaven, and it might not be that you were about to go murder someone, but you have a story. And just like Paul, you can straight up tell it like it is. It doesn't have to make sense. I'm sure that they thought he was crazy. As a matter of fact, they do, but we'll get to that. And if you noticed in the middle of this scripture, as I told you, he's talking to this man named King Agrippa. King Agrippa, and just as his name might state, no, his first name isn't King. Uh, his first name is probably Agrippa. I'm not sure. It might be his last name. But King Agrippa was the king of a small area in northern Israel. And Paul is being moved from community to community to community because he's been arrested. And nobody can really say for sure why, but really all they know is that we're Jewish and what Paul is saying about Jesus doesn't add up to what we believe. We don't really believe that this guy was God, that he resurrected from the tomb, great, he can be a good guy, but no, 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 Jesus isn't God. But Paul is walking around saying, no, I know this to be true. And he's given this opportunity to share this here. 
In Acts 26 verses one through two, it sets the stage for Paul to be able to share this testimony, to be brave enough to testify. And it says this, Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. You can imagine he's, he's in front of the king and he says, you have permission to speak for yourself. And Paul says this in return to him. So Paul motioned with his hand, probably something like this. Paul motioned with his hand and began his defense, King Agrippa, I consider myself fortunate to stand before you today, you know, he's kind of sucking up, as I make my defense against all the accusations of the Jews, and especially so because you are well acquainted with the Jewish customs and controversies. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. This is nothing new for Paul. At this point, he's been in jail for about two years, bouncing from community to community to community because no leader can find anything guilty in him to throw him in jail for good or to kill him. So he's actually brought here to King Agrippa by another king, another leader named Festus. And Festus says, you gotta hear this guy. He has the craziest story. So King Agrippa says, yeah, sure, come over. And Paul says, you're a Jew. I know you're gonna know what I'm talking about. So please listen to what I have to say. But King Agrippa isn't just a normal guy. King Agrippa is not only a Jew, so that's gonna be difficult for him to listen to Paul's story because he doesn't agree with this resurrection of Jesus necessarily. But listen to this, this guy's got a track record in his family. King Agrippa, his great-grandfather was the same leader who ordered when Jesus was born that all baby boys would be killed because they were scared of Jesus' reign and rule. Not only that, his great-uncle killed John the Baptist and his father killed James in the Bible. So all of this considered, Paul knew that King Agrippa not only had this, this hurdle that had to be jumped because of his family history, but also because of his, he was a Jew, but more than anything, Paul knew that he needed hope. Number two, that's the second point. Paul made it a priority to testify to those who needed hope. Paul made this a priority. He knew that King Agrippa might be a little bit dangerous, he could probably have him killed, but he knew that King Agrippa needed hope. Which is why we shouldn't be super surprised to hear that this is what happens next. In Acts 26, verse 24, it says this, as Paul just shared his whole testimony about seeing a light from heaven, it says, at this point, Festus, the government leader who brought him there, interrupted Paul's defense and he said, he said, you are out of your mind, Paul. You're out of your mind. Your great learning is driving you insane. Do you hear what you're saying? You were in a road and a light came down and a voice in Aramaic said, I am Jesus and you have a purpose in this world. What? You're crazy. You're crazy. That's what Festus said as King Agrippa sat there and thought to himself, what's going on here? The third point is this. Third point is this. You're going to write this down. The truth is our testimonies can make people think that we're crazy. Our testimonies can make people think that we're crazy because we serve a God who far surpasses any understanding of this world. Honestly, if someone were to come to me and say, Sean, I was just walking around. Honestly, I was coming to your house to kill you. And then I kneeled down on the road and I saw a light and Jesus spoke to me and he said, don't kill Sean. Um, I want you to be a messenger for me. First off, I guess I would be thankful that I'm still alive, but I would probably think the guy's a little crazy. But the third point is that our testimonies can make people think that we're crazy, but you know what else they can do? They can really lead people to thinking and eventually lead them to Jesus. And it looks like maybe this is what's happening in the life of King Agrippa. Acts 26, verse 25, Paul says this, I'm not insane. I'm not insane, most excellent Festus. What I am saying is true and reasonable. The king, King Agrippa, is familiar with these things and I can speak freely to him because I'm convinced that none of this escaped his notice, because it was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do. And then Agrippa says this, Agrippa, a Jew whose family has killed people like Paul forever, he should be quick to kill Paul in this moment. But here's what King Agrippa says. Do you think that in such a short time that you can persuade me to be a Christian? And Paul replies, short time or long, I pray to God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today may become what I am, except for these chains. Except for these chains. Wow, wow. Beautiful. Paul 
in this midst where he could have been killed for sharing his testimony, he steps up, tells it like it is, and says, I pray that this is what you can experience too. In verse 30 and 31 tells what happens at the end of this story. It says that the king rose, and with him the governor and Bernice, another lady who was there, and those sitting with him. And after they left the room, they began saying to one another, this man is not doing anything that deserves death or imprisonment. Like, no duh. That's why he's been bouncing around from community to community for two years. And Paul viewed his moment right here, this moment of struggling, as a time to share his testimony. And, and to me, this just draws the clearest line of what's happening potentially in our world today. We have Festus and we have King Agrippa everywhere we go all around us. They're saying, if, if your God is real, then why is this happening, Paul? Why are you still in jail? Or Sean, if the Jesus you believe in is still there, then why is this coronavirus striking everybody down left and right and the world's going crazy? What's going on? And this might be a time that as Christians, we need to step in and say circumstances aren't perfect. I know that. And I know that my peace doesn't make sense that I have just like Paul, but I know that my God's going to come through. And I believe that he's good. And I believe that he's in control. Paul viewed this as a moment to share his testimony. And I want to close tonight with a challenge. And the challenge by now is probably pretty clear. But my challenge is this. I want you tonight, I don't know what it looks like, but I want you to share your testimony with somebody. Or maybe multiple somebodies, but I want you to think about this. I don't know how you're viewing this video tonight. More likely than not is through some sort of social media. And since the coronavirus, COVID-19 stuff started happening, social media stats are through the roof. People are viewing church online, they're getting most of their news online, and they need to because they can't leave the house, right? Instagram itself, the stats have risen 22% in the past month. So there are more people viewing Instagram than ever have been. And that's a large reason why we do some of our streaming and why we try to bring so much of our youth group content to Instagram because guess what? There are people that need hope desperately. And guess what? You are people who have experienced hope and have a testimony about this hope just like Paul did. 1 Peter 3.15 says this, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. That, that's our goal tonight. I want to challenge you with two things. Number one, if you've never thought about your testimony, if you're watching tonight, you're thinking, I don't know if I've actually ever accepted Jesus into my heart, and you believe that he's the savior of the world like I do, Take a moment, pause this video, close out of the app and pray, Jesus, I accept you into my life. I repent of my sins and I want to follow you. And if you've already done that, think a different way. Think, how do I share my story with somebody? What have I moved from to what I am now? How did I experience this? And what kind of feeling of peace and joy am I feeling in this crazy time? And then think about how can I share this? Maybe, maybe you live in a family where people aren't Christians. Maybe tonight is the night that you tell your mom or your dad, hey, this is how I feel about Jesus. And just like Paul, short time or long time, I'm praying that you can experience this too. Or maybe it's an Instagram post telling all of your friends and followers, hey, I, I don't know where you're at tonight, but if you have any questions about Jesus, I wanna answer them. I wanna pray with you because even though the world is crazy and you might be feeling overwhelmed, I know someone, I know a God who can give peace and joy in the midst of it. And you know why? You know how we can be so confident of this? Even if we don't feel it right now, look at Acts 26, read through this, read through the life of Paul and see this peace that he has. Man can't manufacture that. It has to come from something greater and we believe that that's Jesus. I pray that tonight you can just lean into that love, that you can maybe even accept it for the first time. And if you already know him, let's get out there. Let's be brave enough to testify to the goodness of our God even when the world might say that he's not. Can I pray for you? Lord Jesus, I just pray for who's ever watching this video tonight. God, speak into their lives with how you've moved. Sometimes the devil will try to convince ourselves that, oh, we don't have a story. I didn't see a light from heaven and I didn't used to kill Christians. But I do know that Jesus has been working in my life and help us give words to those feelings and the experiences that we've had. Not just for us to look good, God, but 
for your kingdom to be known, and for people to feel the peace that we feel in you. It's all this in your name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed week. We love you. Thanks for tuning in. All right, students, your parents have a Zoom link in their email. Why don't you go and grab that link so that you can come and join us in that meeting where we can kind of spend just a little bit of time together now breaking down this message, talking about how it really can apply to our lives, maybe what keeps us from doing these things and how we can make that shift from, from maybe not being brave enough to being brave enough to testify. So go grab that link and I'll see you in a few minutes.